Hello, everybody, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, and everybody else who's joined our my channel or just maybe caught this video. Um, I doubt though the title will grab anybody. It's really just uh, a quick update. Uh, the pastor that we've been praying for, Steve, has gone home to be with the Lord. And I received a beautiful email that has his wife's thoughts. I don't know if this is what she wrote to say at the funeral. I'm not going to read it. I just, and it's got one from his brother and then one from my friend, our sister in Christ. And she had woke up to the song playing somewhere over the rainbow and somehow she knew it was for Steve but didn't really want to believe that but found out later um, that it was that she was thinking that and felt like the Lord was telling her he was going home but anyway, um, so she left a, a little something that she, her thoughts. But really, I just wanted to let you know, you know, for a Christian, it's that really loves the Lord and that's ready to go. In other words, you don't have unrepented sin on your heart. You don't have unforgiveness toward others in your mind in your heart you're loving Jesus the way you're supposed to he said love the Lord your God that includes the Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit love the Lord your God with all your heart mind soul and with all your strength and he said, the second one is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And he also said later that whatever you do for the least of thy brethren, that you do unto me. Well, um, likewise, if you don't do something kind for someone that you could have done you had the money or the opportunity or whatever depends on what it was could have been helping a neighbor mow their lawn help them get their lawnmower started if you see them having trouble but you're like ah I about the ball game's about to start I gotta get inside and you know, get the TV going. And, you know, maybe you don't really watch a whole lot of TV, but you got to get inside and watch that game. Okay, you think that would keep you from heaven? I don't think so. But if that's your pattern of living, you know, that that would be something that I would repent for that night. Okay, you're not helping someone when I could have. But um, it's just living as best as we can. And when we mess up, just ask Jesus to forgive you. Because whatever you refuse to do to the least of thy brethren, that you refuse to do for him. So let's all remember that any of us could go home or not make it before the raptures and if you're not ready to die you're not ready for a rapture so let us all remember that love God most love one another do unto others as if they were Christ even though they don't act like it and 
try to spread the gospel when you're when you can. If you feel led of the Holy Spirit, if He's urging you, when you feel that inner urging, He will help you know what to say. It's amazing what will come out of your mouth if you know the word. That's another reason to read the word. If you know the word, if it's up here, even though you might not be able to remember verses, you know, like where it is. We call it the address. <laughs> What's the address of that verse? <laughs> Some people say that. Well, anyway, you may not know the verses where it is but if it's up here he'll help you remember it and he'll bring it out of your mouth kind of like when we pray in the spirit it just comes out we can't think of what is uh, coming out because we don't understand it and I figured out why we don't I had a friend here the only friend I had that would come to our my quote-unquote prayer meetings okay the first night there was four and then there was only two <laughs> the next week I guess the other two just didn't like my former I did not pray in the spirit even they didn't come back but anyway um this lady that was coming every week um she said she was praying that God would let her know what she was praying. She wanted to know what she was saying when she prayed in tongues. Well, here's what I figured out. If we knew everything we prayed in the Spirit, because the Spirit prays for us for things we know not, or we know not of, however it's worded. Now, what if, your neighbor's having an affair and he's struggling and trying to do right and he needs prayer but he's too embarrassed to ask for that prayer for that the Holy Spirit might have you pray for him for that in the spirit and if you understood what you were saying, you would know that he was having an affair. Then what would you do? Would you be tempted to go over there and talk to him about it? And what if you did? And it wasn't the Holy Spirit leading you. She might find out, the wife, who might be your friend, Maybe not, you know, You, I don't know, that doesn't matter. But you may break up a marriage if, if you go over there to talk to him. So that's just at the, off the top of my head, the first thing that came to me. There's many other examples I probably could have used. But you don't always need to know, okay? We, the Lord, that is so, such a wonderful reason to want to pray in the Spirit. So we can pray for things. People that are having these kind of problems. Or maybe they're about to file bankruptcy because they're so behind in their bills. For whatever reason, maybe it's not even a good reason. And the Holy Spirit doesn't want you to know their business. He just wants you to pray for them. And I don't know why that came to me, but maybe somebody needed to hear that. Let's just, you know, enjoy that gift. Pray that way because it says in Ephesians 6 at the very end of the, let's see, I think it starts at 12, 10 or 12, about the armor, about how our war is not against flesh and blood but is against the powers and principalities in the heavenlies and in the high places which is why we need to forgive the people because there's a demon acting in their life if they are mean if they're mean-spirited if they're um well that pretty much covers it you know, liars, 
they lie about you, they say stuff about you behind your back, they conned you out of some money, borrowed it, never paid it back, whatever. There's a spirit behind that. So we war against the principalities, the spirits that make them act that way, okay? So we put on our armor. You read Ephesians 6, I don't know, 10 through the end. I think it's 17. But then it ends with, and pray in the Spirit at all times with all manners of prayers and petitions and for all the saints. It doesn't say for all people. Now, if you are led... Go ahead and pray for people. If you feel God wants you to pray for, let's say, all the children. We want to pray for the children that are being abused, kidnapped, used. However, do that. If you want to pray for all the Muslims to get converted in the Middle East, go ahead if you feel led. But that's... That, that, that particular verse is referring to and pray in the Spirit at all times for all the saints with all manners of prayers and petitions and, and for all the saints. Okay, so it does say with all manners of prayers and petitions and for all the saints. So yeah, the other part would cover praying for the Muslims uh, or say you have a heart for the Japanese people and they have a million gods, you know, and, or perhaps you just want to include them all, you know, that's fine too. All right, I'm going to end it here. Boy, that ended up leading into a little bit of a sermon, didn't it? And I want to end it with this. I, since I have so many new subscribers, and I'm very blessed and honored that you chose to subscribe to me, because my subscribers could tell you how imperfect I am. I tell you what, I do my very best. But, you know, I have a little bit of trouble with certain, like, my memory and... I don't always do fact checking, and I'm trying to remember to do that more and more before I put up a video, or to stop and pray, is this something they really need to hear? You know, like, I don't want to put up fear porn, what people call that, I don't even have to say that word, but just to make you afraid. What I want to do is encourage you. I want to talk about the two raptures. Because a lot of you, I, I get the feeling, think that any day now is the rapture and everybody's going to go. Well, just like I was talking about earlier, not everybody's going. Only a small amount goes in the barley harvest. Okay? Okay. Jesus called it the barley harvest. Other people have received it as the first fruits. They've also received it as not a rapture as much as a transfiguration. Well, everybody that gets raptured is transfigured, if you think about it. Even the second group, because... Which, let me just add, the second group you can see in Revelation 7, verses 9 to 17. He's chasing another bug. Where'd he go, Jasper? Where'd he go? I really don't like him eating roaches, but he's a bug catcher he is a hunter for sure and he catches them and he plays with them and he'll let them run a little ways and then <laughs> he'll go catch them again he gets a big kick out of it well anyway 
about the two raptures, the second group you see in Revelation 7, which is the sixth seal, or right immediately after the sixth seal, which is the great earthquake, which I believe is the one that's going to divide America. My opinion only. Jesus hasn't told me that. I just believe that. That great earthquake is going to end up being a result of maybe the volcano, Yellowstone going off. It could be a result of another fault going off. However God has it planned is how it will work. But let's go back to the first rapture. What do you got to do to be ready? What I told you earlier. What do you have to do to be ready to die? Nothing unholy will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But here's the neat part. The first people, the first fruits that go up and get changed into our glorified bodies, we get instructed and we get special armor and superpowers and we come back to help all the you, you people I say you people because there's going to be some watching me that aren't ready. Why would that be? You got to love God most. You got to turn off that television set. You got to get into your word. You've got to give up some stuff. A lot of people won't be able to. They just won't. You met, you probably might... A lot of people need heart healing and deliverance. People don't believe that Christians can have demons. But I'm here to tell you, I've been delivered of some recently. And one of them, at least, goes all the way back to my first marriage. Something that was a curse on his family. My first husband's family and I ended up getting it from him and the reasons why are all kinds of reasons if you were born in one of those religions like Catholicism and there's some that are considered Protestant but they're very close they baptize babies when they're little but in the Catholic Church they at least when they prayed in Latin, I don't know what they say now, but in Latin, the parents don't know what the priest is saying. And he's actually claiming your soul for the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church is totally controlled by Satan who rules the world. And that's a whole nother video. If you go back a few videos, the one about the whore, is the, the uh, mystery Babylon, is the whore that rides the beast, that's America. America will be the second place of the second Rome before it's destroyed. So see, there, there's got to be some things that have to happen. And the first rapture is going to be soon. And I hope that the second rapture is not long after. But just a minute, please. Just a minute. Okay, well, my friend is here. So um, if you have any questions about that, please leave them in the comments. But check on that video I made on, on Rome. Um, but the Babylon, Mystery Babylon, okay? So I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over us all, over this video, over our devices and our internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.